Joan Quinn Profiles. As an editor for Andy Warhol's interview, the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, LA Style, and Detour Magazines, Joan covered the social set, the Hollywood hotshots, the international art scene, the mysteries of food, the excitement of travel, and the fabulous world of fashion. Joan continues to find creative people on the cutting edge who make things happen. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Our guests waiting to be profiled are director Raul Delacchia and artist Susie Silsky Cantorino. She did all the little pigs on the set and the beautiful hanging in the back. Director Raul Delacchia was born in the state of Gujarat, India. In 2001, he directed the film My Heart Keeps Repeating. It was kind of a Hindi meets the parents. How did you get involved in that film, Raul? Um, I used to do ad films and documentaries oh. in New Jersey. And, um, Is that right, in yes, New Jersey? Yeah, in New Jersey. <laughs> and um, I went to this producer with a big script uh, of of, of an epic film and he says that oh this is too big a film don't do this I've just watched this great film <laughs> try and adapt this for the Indian market is that right Yeah, that's how it was and, and then we'll do this epic film later so I wanted to do the epic film so I said all right fine let me do this one first and that's how it started and how was it was done in where was it it was shot film? in New York uh, oh, it entirely was. I think it was the first Indian film to be shot entirely in New York really and one stretch yes uh, it was fun did you go to film school? Uh, yes, I went to film school in New York, uh, New York Tech. Oh, uh, so you've been in the States for how long? About uh, 17 years now. Oh, uh, so you're like a native. I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> yeah, I'm a native New Yorker. <laughs> so did you, when you were working on documentaries, were they part of your art, of your uh, training, film training, or <laughs> did you just decide to do documentaries? No, I think uh, it was before, uh, even when I was in India, I, I did some documentaries and then I came here to do my master's in film and my final thesis was a documentary. Oh, it was. And what was it on? It was on a Pakistani taxi driver in New York City. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, he was an interesting character and, and uh, he had never told his family that he was driving a taxi. Um, oh, so many of them do. They don't, they don't they? tell their family. They tell them that they are salespeople or something like that because uh, his argument, which is very logical, is that you go all the way to America and then you drive a taxi, then you must be a stupid person, you know. I know, isn't that too bad? Yeah. Yes, it's, uh, but then once the documentary was made, I think he showed it to their family and he says, now I can proudly tell them that I <laughs> am a star. <laughs> when you go back and forth uh, to India, do you go to the state of Gujarat? Oh uh, yes, almost every year. Uh, what, what cities are there? Uh, there is a major industrial city over there called Ahmedabad. Oh, Ahmedabad, yes. that's in Gujarat? That's in Gujarat. And then there are smaller cities like Baroda, and Rajkot and uh, uh, other cities over there. Surat is, is like the diamond capital over there. It's the diamond. Are they tourist destinations? Ahmedabad is probably. Ahmedabad is a tourist destination, but then we have a wildlife sanctuary called the Gir uh, Forest, where the only Asian lions are uh, there. They bought. It's it's a sanctuary for the lions over there. So really? Yes, yeah, that's that's a tourist destination. So so w where were you born? I was born actually in Bombay, but my family has been in Gujarat and we Gujaratis. So so they're G Gujarati, but Bombay, which they all call yeah. Mumbai. Mumbai, yeah. Uh, did you ever call it that? <laughs> no, I, I still don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you're right. <laughs> where where did um, the action of this film, which is your newest film, <coughs> Parzania. Yes. Where did this take place? It us? happened uh, the first in um, in a place called Godra, where uh, a train was burnt. Uh, this was about three hours from Ahmedabad, and then in Ahmedabad city, where majority of my film takes place. Uh, and what does the name mean? Parzania. Parza, uh, Parza Parzania. Parzan is uh, the boy who is missing in the riots. And uh, he has an imaginary world called Parzania, where uh, buildings are made of chocolates and mm. nobody is killing each other over religion. And you can play cricket all day. So. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, it's heaven? Heaven and on hell on earth, yeah. That's the mood of the film, that's the style of the film, because the child's word is very heavenly. 
and then there is a hell which happened in Gujarat and the family which has to go through it. It's a true story. Is it a documentary like you're used to doing? Uh, no, it's, it's a fiction film. I mean, uh, it's, it's a film, it's a feature film uh, with actors like Nasiruddin Shah who, played in who was in Monsoon Wedding. Is this? Yeah, that's Nasir who was in Monsoon Wedding and then there is an actress called Sarika who's making I'm going to open this and you can tell. Okay. He was in Monsoon Wedding yes. and she? She is Sarika. She is uh, an actress who comes back into Bollywood after 18 years. Where was she? She was married to a very famous uh, director, I mean actor called Kamal Hassan. Uh, he did uh, uh, Nayak and, and, uh, and, and a lot of other This films. is your first film? My first film? Your first Indian, first in India in, yes. film, right? Yes. Basically. Basically, yeah, second one. The first one was the... Right. But, but how did you draw these people? How did you get these I think kind it of was actors? The, um, I think it was mainly the script uh, which drove them to it and the sub subject matter. And so why didn't you make it a documentary? Because there was already a documentary which is very uh -huh. good, which was made. And uh, I think there's a lot more you can say in fiction and get away with... Uh, because you can play with the emotions, you can, you can work on that. I, I was going to say, the other films that talked about the same problem, one was Black Friday. Yes, Black Zakim. Friday. Zakim. Black Friday talked about the Bombay bomb blasts. Ah, and Zakim. Uh, Zakim, Zakim yeah. Zakim. That also talked about uh, uh, something about the, the communal riots in Bombay. But and this, War and this Peace. Is the, War and Peace is an epic uh, documentary. So, so they're all do those other ones are documentaries. No, Zakam and Black Friday. Br Black Friday is a docudrama. Oh, I see. Zakam is a feature. Uh huh. Uh, the the only documentary which has been made on this subject is Final Solution. Oh, oh, I see. But Ra that that's the thing you can tell. They've all told stories about what's going on and right. the religious wars. Yes. It's actually this is more about a genocide which happened in Gujarat. Uh, it's not so much about one community against another, but it's the uh, that's what the what happened in Gujarat. But the film is about what happens to a family in a situation like this, and it that's why it makes it a much more universal subject because it could be in Africa, it could be in Bosnia, it could be in Iraq, it could be in New York, you know. Because when you have such actions, um, acts of violence, then the common man is affected and what really happens to this family because you don't kill one person in, in a situation like this you're killing the entire family because they have to live All right. almost like that for like the rest of their life. Like they're gone, yes. like they're gone and it was uh, this riot was initiated by a, bo uh, by a, a train Yes it blast. started off with a train blast uh, in Gujarat. Did you film it in Ahmedabad? Yes I did. Oh, you did? Yes. Well, weren't you afraid? Uh, yes, uh, to an extent. And uh, we were shooting very low profile. There's a scene over there where um, I have to put in saffron flags uh, in, in the streets. And, because uh, that's the one that, side that, of the... That's the, the color, yeah, of uh, the right-wing Hindus. So uh, they came up to me and they said, are you from the right-wing Hindu party in, in Bombay, which is the VHP? And I said, uh, yes. He says, okay, go ahead, shoot. It was okay, go ahead and shoot. <laughs> but then so, after you finished it, you couldn't show it there. Yes, I can't show it there. Uh, there's an unofficial ban on the film. It's been screened all over the country, and, and yet uh, there are some, uh, there's one person who is a member of one of these right-wing parties called the Bajrang Dal, and he's threatening for violence and stuff like that. He's, auto he's become the moral police of Gujarat and the spokesperson of the Gujaratis, which I find ridiculous. Because uh, you're, you want to show it all it, over. Yeah, and it happened in that state. Um, and uh, it's ultimately an issue about freedom of speech and expression. And uh, in the largest democracy of the world, which is India, you can't have people holding uh, the whole state and country at ransom because of their whims and fancies. So, well, but it's not been screened right now in Gujarat. Did you feel threatened by the opposition at all? Uh, yourself? I did not feel uh, threatened myself <coughs> because um, I think I was walking on the path of truth, so I was not uh, worried about it. But in retrospect, uh, people do tell me that, don't you have police protection? Aren't you doing... I'm looking, I'm thinking <coughs> about it because you said it was so dangerous to be where you were. Yeah, but uh, no, I don't think, um, I don't know. I think it was just the belief in the film and the project and uh, my uh, commitment to the family 
whose story it is. Was a friend of yours? Very close friend of mine. Uh, he, he, we were in fact, uh, a month before this happened, we were celebrating a festival in India called Uttran festival in Gujarat, where we fly kites and the whole family was together. And that was in January 14th and 28th of February this happened and uh, all and of the us, boy boys, is gone. he's still missing and the father is still looking for his son. He still carries the same cell phone with the number so that if anybody has any information, he can contact him. How sad is that? Yes, it's uh, pretty sad and that's exactly the point I'm trying to drive in the film also is that it doesn't matter uh, what religion you are, what uh, community you belong to, which country you are in. Exactly. Because this issue is universal. What's next for you? Uh, I want to do a film on Kashmir. Oh, do you? But uh, a beautiful <laughs> Kashmir, but with no, all the with that. all with all the army and the militants <laughs> and it's and like a beautiful prison. Exactly. And, and the film is about actually about uh, the identity one loses in a situation like this. Because it's like Dahl and yes, and what's the other lake? Uh, I uh, see there's Lake Dal and then there's the Chinar and uh, two big lakes. Yeah. There's lakes and the mountains up above you and you can hear gunshots during yes. the day. That's why I met some students from Kashmir and they said that uh, we are living in a beautiful prison. <laughs> and uh, that's exactly what I want to try and capture. But it will be a thriller. It will uh, be a, fi a fiction. Uh, fiction, thriller, uh, but not not so much as intense as Parzania. So should we keep you in California? Are you going to continue living here? I would love to live here. <laughs> <laughs> Raul, thank you so much for telling us about your film and um, all the work that you've done. Thank you very much. And we'll be right back with um, Susie Cantorino. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. I'm with artist, sculptor, Susie Silsky Cantorino. I met Susie with her architect husband, Ricardo, in Rio not long ago at their historic hilltop home overlooking the lights of the dazzling city of Rio. Susie was born and raised in Buenos Aires, Argentina, where she studied drama. Then in the 70s, she was off to Israel for two years. Susie, you had such a dual life. You were like on a kibbutz, you were being a drama student, you were, what were you doing? Why did you go to Israel? Well, I left uh, Buenos Aires. It was in the time of the dictadura. So oh. I had to leave. And, but it was very good being in Israel. I studied there and I had an incredible time. Ah, but when you went, to Israel. It was 75. Did, did you go as a did, as a student? Um, Were you studying there? I finished school and I wanted to do really drama, but then they offered me three big Bertolt Brecht <laughs> books to, to read in Hebrew. So it was, and without points, it was impossible for Could me. Could you read it? Yeah, but not in two days to represent <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> so I said, okay, thank you. And then I started with my work and I studied art. Fine and arts. then you studied art? Yeah, I studied. And when did you start traveling? Because from Buenos Aires to Israel to India. I always traveled. I love traveling. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> did you go to Brazil first? No. Uh, yeah, from India I went to Brazil. But then I went back to Israel, and then I was invited to go to Brazil, so I stayed there. When, when you were in India, what were you, were you doing the same kind of thing as you were in Israel? Or yeah, was I it a different? I was studying in, in Israel, and I was doing big things, a lot of photography, and ah. really big, big canvas. It was in the, it was, our school was like pop, very pop art. Yeah. Ah, really? So my father and would be Hauschenberg and uh, Tapies and Waho. And oh, really? So we had a very, very good, really good, good teachers. When the drama started and the art started, did they ever mix together? Yes. They did? <laughs> yes. And How did they do that? 
I do performance sometimes, uh, and I think that art is everything. It's music, it's, it's living, it's a way of, it's, I think it's everything <laughs> for so, me. And then, and then what brought you to Rio? Because that's where I met you, and your spectacular house, and that spectacular view, and everything in it by you, which was so moving. We moved a lot in Rio too. This is our house where we are only four years, uh -huh. but we moved a lot too in a lot of neighborhoods. But you've been in Rio, what, about 15 years? Uh, yeah, 18 years, uh -huh, uh -huh. yes. And uh, I love it, I love Rio. Do you have your own stu separate studio? No, I have got the studio at home. And on, I like working at home and in the outside where you saw the gardens too. And s so much of the travel has influenced your work. How would you say that? How do you? I think it's a collection of things which happen. My mind always is creating all the time. And I think that, of course, things get into your inconsciencia. So I think things come out. And I work a lot with my memory. If, if you look at my work, oh. you will feel a lot of memory. So I think it, it's like it flows. All the experiences, all the people, the colors I've seen everywhere. And, and I'm going to show this because I think this is a, a bit of collage. This is collage. For, this is a Buenos Aires, uh, inspired in Buenos Aires, yes. Tell us a little bit about this side. This side would be uh, Three Wishes for Peace. This is, um, I think, there must be be peace all over the world and I was living in Israel although this was done in Brazil but I think Palestinians and Israelis need to get peace so this people write people make politics I do my art you so do. my feelings <laughs> flow with art and this side this side um, to tell you the truth I don't really remember <laughs> <laughs> this is very odd but it's it's a collage and I think I was so, so people, the downed one is Polonia, and I think I was like feelings, ah, I remember. This was done for a book, for, yeah. a, for a cover for a book, which I didn't use afterwards. I had another word. And um, when, we, when we look through this, you say this is one of the earliest times. I think you used all different kinds of, of uh, Technique. techniques. Mm -hmm. One is collage, what else, sculpture. Collage, sculpture, uh, as I'm, I, I use a lot of photography. Ah. My photography, I started with my photography and with a lot of oil pastels. And this I would call the collage. And then these sculptures were made of... These are sculptures now. Yeah, they're transparent uh, vegetal paper and with music and with ink. So and a lot of things go into your work. All the it's time. It's just not flat. No. <laughs> it was flat. It's not flat anymore. Not like you. <laughs> it's three-dimensional. And then from that, we had another catalog with a lot of writing on the pieces. Yeah. Let's see if I can get this. Let's see if I can find one here because we were talking. This is another. This is a. This is an older work too. Still but it has the writing. Yeah. Did you do the writing? Yes, always. I have a lot of works with writing. I always wrote and I think and, and, and it's, it's great because I, I really, I can write what I think. I can write a poem I invent in the moment or what happened today, but always things with good, like with good words and good feelings. And these are things that we have gotten from the shows. These are catalogs from your shows. So this is contrast. This was in 2003. Yes. And what kind of, and, and they were the contrast of what? This, I call that contrast because, again, I work a lot with contrast, with red and white, and, and with colors oh, with and color contrast. with color contrast. Or with meaning color contrast, which is more powerful. You can here see, for example. Uh, this was meant, here you see a lot of writing uh -huh. and I'll show it to this panel. Okay. That contrast. And there is a contrast because it's, uh, you see Marilyn Monroe with a feather and ah, then you see right. the dictadura with a nail. So it's very subtle. And I think <coughs> uh, it was very, very, very subtle. And I think today I'm going to more direct things. So, so from this, 
Then it we developed. Went, we, we went into... Into the transparency. Into the transparencies. And then we went, excuse me, I'm going too <laughs> fast for my camera, but we went to anima. Yes. And anima means what? Soul. Ah. So tell us how this was inspired. <coughs> this work was, um, my mother sent me from Israel a lot of documents and handwriting papers from my grandfather, Ferdinand Levy, which I actually knew. I, so I met him in, in, I knew him in Argentina, and he was a survivor of Theresienstadt uh, concentration camp. Oh, so, so they started like this. Yeah, this was, it was incredible because I long this time. This shows them. It, yeah, I didn't, I never made, and I never had a contact, I never made, Jewish work, so I never had this approach. This, this was with. the first time? Yeah, this was the first like time. Like 2006? Uh, or I had 2005. the 2003 without the like being angry, which what happens uh -huh. in, in the Middle East. Uh -huh. But like I would be angry, what happens with, with every discrimination. Right. But uh, and but this was very touching because when my mother sent me <laughs> the, 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 ca the 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 art the, the, the documents, uh -huh. she sent me the the um, iron cross. Oh yes, which, that's what. Yeah. Yeah, which my grandfather had in the f uh, they gave him in the first World War, but then in Second World War he uh, he was feeling so German, so he didn't leave oh, Germany. Right. Mm -hmm. So they would deport him and when they give him to use the <coughs> Magin David, the um, yellow cross, uh -huh. the yellow star. Yeah, the yellow <laughs> star, right. Uh, I saw he embroidered it with flowers in um, the other side. Mm. So when I saw that, I said, this is so, so touching. That is very touching. He brought some life to it, didn't he, by doing yeah. that? Yeah, he, he, he made some it for happiness. himself, for himself. Right. And no, for, nobody saw that. But, th but th the thing that you did, the valises, yes. which are so interestingly done, Tell us about these. Was this all part of the show? Yes, this was part of the show, and uh, actually, the suitcases. I was reading what my grandfather would uh, tell and write, and the Gestapo uh, said when uh, they were deported, uh, each person can carry one suitcase, uh. sixty. I'm speaking centimeters. Yeah. Sixty by forty-five by twelve centimeters. And you can take only one plate, one spoon, mm. and no knives. Oh, no. So that's why I made the swastika with knives. Oh, that's it. So this is the development of Here the we, suitcases. Here, I'm going to show this, because this is the swastika with knives. Yeah. This was your sculpture. This is a very big sculpture, two meters by two meters, done of knives. You can see that yes, in the, the knives in the other. Yes, you side, yeah. That's great. And it's 1,933, actually 40, but which is Hitler's ascension. Oh, so it was the time, oh, so you did it all? So this, it's, but by the other hand, I put the explanation of what the swastika means, which is a good luck symbol for the Sanskrit. Well, it started before the Germans had yeah. it, right, with the natives. At the Sanskrit. And, I, and, and that's why I think this piece, mm -hmm. you have the cross, you have the swastika, you have everything in this. What was this about? It's that... In the essence, we are all the same, and everybody has his own symbols. But the symbols, as this, are beautiful, and, and the, 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 the real sense of, of everything is fantastic. The problem is what we do with it. Mm. I think um, this installation shows how you have the... Yeah, this is the installation, how you show the... the how the, the suitcases, the suitcases. Yeah. They were all in a row like this. And then the swastika next to it. Yeah, and then the meaning of swastika. So now you've gotten to something that's a lot more <laughs> whimsical. <laughs> and, I, and you brought these all the way for us to see. And it's, I think, the year of the pig. Yes, and you did exactly. The year, you did the pig. And I think it's so funny. It's beautiful. You've got all these different kinds. Just tell us what, which they are. This, the name this of one this. is the Cleopatra pig. And there she is, Cleopatra. <laughs> and then, I love this one. This is the music pig, because I've got a lot of work with music. This is the Bellini music pig. All this. 
This is the Kabbalah pig. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing these really fast. This is the no guns pig. No guns. Look at that. I have some work. And when no it's guns. wrapped in what? Ga gauze. In gauze. Gauze. <laughs> gauze. Gauze. Oh, and this one is so brilliant. This one. We is don't even know. See the front and the back <laughs> of this pig. This is the front. <laughs> this is the Floresta Amazonia. So save the forest. <laughs> so you're telling a story with yes. each one of these. I have you. My porcupine pig. Your porcupine. <laughs> this is made with sticks from Look at the Japanese this. one. This is the Japanese. Japanese. Uh, Isn't it great? It looks like a porcupine. A porcupine. <laughs> It's like things you use. It's things from the cotidiano. These which are um, toothpicks, right? Toothpicks, yes. And we have the Japanese one. We have one. the Japanese one. I've got 23, actually, but I couldn't bring them. Is this going to be, instead of the cow parade, it's <laughs> the pig parade? <laughs> More or less. <laughs> so this will be an installation when you get home? Yes. It's a big installation of 23 pigs, which will be entering into a very big canvas. Onto a canvas? Yes. And this last one? The journal pig, which works with the bamboos, with the bamboos at it. The journal. The journal. <laughs> <laughs> you know what my sister said to me when, when she saw she lives in Israel, and she told me, Susie, you made a swastika, you're doing pigs, what else will you do? <laughs> How else, where else could you go from yeah. here? But you, you do have, travel does influence you. And since you've been in California, have you seen things that will make you look to your next work? You. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, YouTube. You are an incredible person. Oh, thank you. And uh, yeah, I think uh, it's incredible. It's the first time I'm in LA. What about the, the um, terrain and the light and the... The light is incredible. To do, to mo today I wake up, I don't usually wake up very early, but today I wake very early and it's, the light is incredible. So will that be influencing you? Is it For different sure. than what you're in? For sure. I had the same feeling in Japan. The, the, the light in Japan is totally different and here too. Well, we're so glad you came to visit us. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank and, you so much. And thank you for watching the Joan Quinn Profiles today. Keep riding to 777 South Figueroa, 44th floor, Los Angeles 90017. We'll see you next time on the Joan Quinn Profiles. <laughs>